Hello, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of my more recent printer builds. This is the Rat Rig V Minion. And for those looking to get into 3D printing, specifically building your own 3D printer for the first time, this machine's compact size, simplistic design, and excellent documentation can make it a very enticing option. So I've had this printer built and I've been printing with it for several weeks now. So let's take a look at how that build went, my thoughts on the machine itself, and how good it actually prints. So let's get started. So how we ended up at this point was several months ago uh, during a live stream of mine, I had mentioned that I wanted to build a V Minion. I'm kind of on a small printer build spree right now. I like small printers, they're fun. And I mentioned I wanted to build one of these. Originally, I was gonna self-source this machine. You do have the option of purchasing kits from RatRig directly, but they do have the bill of materials available on their website. So I have a lot of 3D printing hardware on hand already, stepper motors, rails, etc. So I was gonna self-source this machine. And while I was putting together my shopping list, I did run into one small problem. And while this machine is mostly commercial off-the-shelf items that you can purchase from most common 3D printer part locations. There are some custom brackets and a bed carriage for this machine. Uh, but luckily somebody from the Rat Rig team actually reached out to me and offered to send me a kit. So what I requested is the mechanical kit. So you have the option of getting everything you need to build this printer fully from Rat Rig. Uh, but since I had a lot of components on hand and I did want to change a few things in the design, specifically with the electronics, I self-sourced all my own electronics for this. But I will say for the mechanical kit that Rat Rig sent, uh, all the components were there. I wasn't missing anything. Uh, everything was of acceptable quality. Nothing stood out as being deficient. I did have one small minor issue. Uh, with a tooth idler. Um, it wasn't spinning freely. That may have come down to printed part accuracy though. Um, I printed all my parts in ABS instead of the PETG that Rat Rig uses. So I didn't scale everything and that did run into a few issues. So in the future, if you do plan on printing your own Rat Rig parts in ABS, scale them to 100 0.5% that was recommended to me and I did reprint some parts uh, to get around some fitment issues. But in the process, I think I killed a uh, tooth idler there. So I replaced it with something I had on hand. So shout out to Rat Rig for the mechanical kit. Uh, YouTube disclosure, of course, they sent me the kit. I haven't been paid or anything, blah, blah, blah. You've heard the YouTube spiel disclosure before. So carrying on, the actual build itself went very well. I didn't really run into any problems. The documentation, as I said at the beginning of the video, is excellent to follow along with. They have a website that has all the steps along with pictures of everything you have to do when it comes to building the printer. Um, once I got to the electronics though, I went on my own ways and diverted from their documentation. And if you wanna see how the build itself went, I live streamed it all on this channel. I stream several times a week, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any future live streams of future builds. Now this machine is your standard, what's commonly called a Cartesian printer. Uh, it is a cantilever gantry, so the gantry is only supported on one side. However, when you combine the MGN 15 rails, uh, 3060 extrusions, this little printer, is a beast and it's a tank. This thing is pretty dang solid. So it being a cantilever gantry is no real concern to me. But when it comes to the electronics, that's when I started switching things up. So with the original design for this printer, there's a separate electronics box uh, that houses your power supply, your controller, your Raspberry Pi, and it's separate from the printer. I personally like everything being on the printer. And with a recent acquisition of an SKR Pico, combining with a UHP 350 power supply, those are compact power supplies and controllers. So I went ahead and I mounted everything to the printer and I did my own electronics. So now we'll go over what I changed from the original design of this machine. So first things first, the power supply. It's a UHP 350 and I used a community mod to mount it to the side of one of the lower extrusions. It's small enough and it's out of the way that it doesn't interfere with anything and it doesn't hang outside of the bounds of the printer itself. So it doesn't really add too much to the printer side. For the electronics, I went with an SKR Pico and I paired it with a Pi Zero 2W. That's the new Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm running Clipper on it with Mainsail as my interface. Now, when it comes to wiring everything up, there are community mods for drag chains. However, I didn't do that for my X and Z. I went with the umbilical cord as design. For my tool head, uh, since I was self-sourcing, I went with an LDO Orbiter V2 for my extruder. I believe the kits come with an LGX light. And then for my hot end, I paired it with a Dragon High Flow that I had on hand. And also on the tool head, I went with a Prusa 
uh, Super Pinda type probe. Now with the electronics box, I am not the greatest at CAD. However, I did manage to brute force my way into having a somewhat decent design, at least in my opinion, of a controller box. And I'll make sure the files are available in the description below for those that want to install one of these yourself. So this allows me now to have the power supply and the controller on the board itself with no separate electronics box. This way, if I move the printer, I could just pick it up and move everything in one go. Now, another thing I did was I actually went with sensorless homing on this machine. Uh, it is designed to have end stops for your X and Y axis. And with the TMC 2209s in the SKR Pico, they can do sensorless homing. I decided to save some wiring, simplify the design a bit, and I went with sensorless homing and it's working great. Um, another change I did is with the bed wire routing. Um, so the original design just has an umbilical coming from the bed. I really don't like uh, bed wires flopping around. So as part of my electronic box design, I incorporated a drag chain holder. Now, as I said earlier, I am running mainsail. For those that are building a stock rat rig machine, they do have what's called rat OS. Rat OS is their own flavor of mainsail and it's designed specifically for the rat rig machines. It allows you to easily set up your machine uh, using options to fill out the parameters for machine size, what type of machine, etc. So since I wasn't building a stock rat rig with stock electronics, I went with the more contemporary uh, mainsail installation and I did create my own configuration for this printer. I'll try to have that available as well for those that wish to build the same type of machine I did. Now when it comes to the mechanicals of the printer, I built it pretty much stock. I didn't really change too much of the original specifications and design of the printer in that regard. Uh, the only thing I really added was this community mod here for this reverse or feeder Bowden tube. And the reason for that is in the original design, um, there's really nothing that connects the spool to the extruder. You, you, you put your spool of filament on and you have your extruder, you put a little feeder boat on it, but there's nothing. It just kind of, I, I guess it just kind of sits there. I, I don't know, uh, but there's this community mod out there. I'll have this linked and it makes a nice little feeder boat and setup. Now, the only real complaint that I have of the build itself, and this is kind of a little critique, um, just coming from somebody who's been involved in a design team designing 3D printers for a couple of years now. For a small, simple printer such as this, this has more components when you're comparing screws, nuts, and bolts, uh, as fasteners, for example. Um, this has more components than a Voron V2.4. Um, there's a lot of small quantities of random things. For example, it uses one square M3 nut in this entire machine. Um, the spool holder uses its own piece of 30-30 extrusion and two brackets to mount to the frame. These brackets aren't used in anywhere else in the machine and a spool holder can be a single printed object. So instead we have one, two, three, four, five, six screws with their associated T-nuts with custom brackets and a piece of extrusion um, when it could just be a printed part. The screws that attach um, plastic components, pretty much everywhere in the instructions when you're putting this together, there is a warning saying, do not screw your screws too tight, you will crack the plastic parts. And this is very true. They're all socket head screws. Um, anywhere where you have a screw sitting flat against a printed surface, personally, I would like to see a button head screw. A button head screw, while in my opinion, looking a little bit cleaner than a socket head uh, when it sticks out of a printed part, it actually has a bigger head. There's more surface area to spread out the load, less likely to crack your parts. So I would have liked to see um, socket heads swapped with button heads in several places, as well as when it comes to designing 3D printed parts, you can change your design to kind of use common size screws. So there's a lot of low counts of random screw sizes in here. I'm sure if the rat rig team were to take the time and give this another once over, they could take a simple build and make it even simpler by streamlining their bill of materials. On the other side of that too, streamlining your bill of materials does help when you're making kits, warehousing items, it's less material to have on hand. So that's just kind of a, a personal nitpick and it's not really a major one, but that's really the only takeaway I have of the build is just there's a lot of little random parts on a relatively small printer. I guess that's an okay gripe to have because if you're nitpicking that, there's really not much else to complain about. So I've had the machine up and running now for several weeks. I've put some print hours on it. How well does it print? And the answer is pretty well. Uh, for all these prints, I ran the stock 
Super Slicer profile that RatRig has put out and is available for this machine. I haven't really done too much tweaking there. Um, I know others are running this machine much faster than that and getting good results out of it. I will say uh, kudos to the EVA tool head that this machine uses. It provides excellent part cooling with the 5015 fans and the ducts. I did end up having to print the higher up uh, ducts as the stock ones were a little too low for my setup here. Um, but that's just the printed parts on a main issue and it prints great. It's an orbiter extruder. It's a dragon high flow hot end. It's got a decent motion system on it. It'll print a pretty good benchy. And again, this is mostly stock profile settings. I actually hit this machine with a lot of prints that required support for some reason. And I will say it, it nailed them pretty good. The default settings for supports uh, for breakaway is pretty clean. I'm sure I could do a little bit more tweaking uh, to really dial in this machine here. Um, I'm still running it pretty stock and it's printing everything that I'm giving it to print. Now, this machine obviously is not enclosed. Um, I believe they are working on an official enclosure for this printer, but Really any enclosure that fits common printers like the Prusa Mark III or the Ender III will work with this. So if you wanna just put a cardboard box over it, um, you can go ahead and do that if you wanna print materials such as ABS with this machine. Uh, the bed has no problem reaching those temperatures. So overall, I'm very happy with this machine. I will say for those that are looking to get into building 3D printers, a machine like this is a great place to start. It's simple, it's well documented. There's a great community out there that you can go to for support. Shout out to the Rat Rig Discord community. And it's a great machine. Now comparing this to other printers of the same type, can't really do. Um, I don't have a Prusa Mini and the last cantilever printer I had was a monoprice select mini, which is nowhere near the same class of machine as this. Um, I know a lot of people compare this to the Voron V0. However, I don't really think they're in the same category. One's a Core XY, this is a Cartesian gantry style machine. This has a 180 millimeter bed, whereas the Voron V0 has a 120 millimeter bed. It's much smaller. So I will say for those looking for a mid-size to small 3D printer, specifically one that you can build yourself, definitely give this machine a look. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you do have any questions about this machine, ask them in the comments below. I will have links in the description for the printed SKR Pico enclosure, as well as links to the mods I am running on this printer here. And while you're down there, make sure you like that smash button. And if you wanna help support the content I create and the things I do, there's links in the description as well. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, have yourselves a great day. Cheers.